And with that, we are indeed ready for Deuce X Human Resolution by F. Paul. It's all yours. Take it away. Hello, hello. This time from the runner's chair. And this is Deuce X Human Revolution. You've seen it a few times. The last times with this wonderful guy behind me. It is Heinke, the legend. And mm. this time I'm going to write it alone because, I don't know, a little bit of a switch up. Uh, but we do have some interesting plans for the future. Um, so I guess we'll drop straight in and uh, Human Revolution, if you haven't seen it yet, we load from a starting save, which is after like a real kind of cutscene and that makes it so we don't have to wait. I'm not sure how many minutes it was. And start off with our first code. We input... Timer? Oh yeah, we should <laughs> also start with the timer. We're gonna add that a few seconds later. Um, all the timer, by the way, yeah, you don't... You, you stop thinking about the timer. Um, yeah, 0451, that is the uh, entrance code for our developer studio, Looking Glass. And uh, you see it in a few of the games, and it's one of the mini codes we have for this, right? And uh, while well, you, you know them, um, this is just a backup sheet, because, you know, it's uh, a marathon, and you, you're going to have that time where you're just like, oh, what was the codes? Four digits? Yes, yeah. A few too much combos to brute force. So we're going to uh, start with this fire extinguisher here. And one thing you will see a lot during the run is uh, us going through walls. And that is an uh, interesting mechanic from the game itself. It is pretty much trying to make sure we're not getting stuck. And we can abuse that a little with the walls that are very thin. We kind of throw the box into us and make it so that the physics clip it into us. And then it's not, um, it's not fast enough to put it to the side so that when it makes the kind of like calculation for where to put us, it is behind the wall, which is the... Um, shortest distance. I think my DPI is a little off, but it should be fine. I have more than enough space on this desk. And that's, yeah, basically how we get through the wall. The walls are thin, and we clip the box into it, and the thing says, oh, unstuck you, back behind the wall. And you will see that a lot during this run. So far, so good. We are in the entrance, uh, like, pre-chapter of this. We are currently a normal human, I guess you could say trying to rescue our people, but um, yeah, if you haven't seen this game yet, um, spoiler, it's not gonna go so well. You can probably see that there's a little bit of chaos happening here, and uh, this is a game against, uh, about like cyber people, right? So, um, so far we are not, and that's gonna change in just a few seconds. And I'm not gonna spoil the cutscene too much because this is a game I can absolutely recommend to play. It's like super old now, it's very well aged, it's a very cool game to play and uh, pretty much we are now augmented which means you can see some of our parameters now. We have uh, some energy, that's the two green batteries at the top left. Uh, you can see our stamina and as you can also see now um, is uh, I'm jumping always when the stamina is nearly about to run out. That is because during the air time we keep our speed. So if the air time is when our sprint runs out, we keep sprinting. But um, when we get back to the ground, we already have regenerated a little for our stamina, which means we can then just sprint again and jump again. And that's pretty much how we can make a permanent sprint in this game. <coughs> this is also our lovely guy Prichan, which is going to fix us up a little. That man will make us not blinking anymore and some other stuff to work. And then we're going to drop into the first real mission of the game. <coughs> So, we are running in French, Heike. Why is that? So, long time ago, the Four Nations, no, uh, wait, wrong uh, wrong lyrics. Um, so, how it basically worked back then is uh, we, we timed out the different languages and figured out that the French version is 13 seconds faster compared to the English one. Second fastest would be Spanish and the slowest two are Russian and German, with 56 seconds in, Ru uh, in German and Russian being like a minute slower. Yeah. Yeah, and that's pretty much why you are hearing the French language in this. Pretty much infolinks is the things you can see at the top right at the moment, which are going to prevent some triggers to be pressed at certain times, and that is why we have to, at times, wait and thus use the fastest language, which takes us the least time of waiting. We're also running on the easiest difficulty for now, for now because that's going to change later. Um, which is just obviously less difficulty, less dead, which is beneficial to the speedrun. 
First, now we pick the lethal and the charge range weapon, and we are in the first like level. And you can see I'm picking up a box. It just means something good, does it? So we're gonna clip around this corner, bypass some triggers, crutch this ladder and not die, that's very good. And then we're gonna go grab our next box here. You can see this is gonna be a lot of box uh, pickups. Uh, this is a trick I have started just like a while ago. It is pretty much just bypassing a few more fights. And But I would like to try it off. It's pretty much just a clip here and then we're gonna do a little bit of out of bounds because it's cool and technically faster if you do it right these uh, box clips with these smaller boxes are generally a little bit more finicky than with bigger boxes which is why uh, I don't like them we're gonna see two more of them uh, which are optional oh, that was bad but I did quick save for that reason it's just a half clip a half clip is pretty much there is no oh that was um i'm just i'm just gonna do it normally now i'm not sure why i didn't quick save i hit the button um so technically we go there with a so-called half clip a half clip is pretty much what we have to do where there is no wall behind us we would just fall into the void if we uh, uh, we would just fall into the void if we didn't stop at the right time, which means that we uh, have to time our release too, and that means we can't just keep holding back, which makes clipping in like that harder. And that is why these half clips are usually more tricky. If I could just keep holding back, like on the current one, where I can keep holding back, and no, I'm not gonna do that, as I said. Um, I'm just not gonna waste time. So I see the alternative, we would gonna basically skip all of this part you're gonna see now which is uh, saving this pickup which is okay because I'm gonna pick this innate up that I just skipped would have skipped uh, a little lighter we're gonna pick up obviously getting shot at and uh, detect it so we get some more like stealth XP that that's fine we skip this room and we pretty much would have dropped into this room and in this room we could have picked up the nade again so it's not that much of a save but it is saving some seconds so that's why i'm trying to go for it and that's why i also tried to show it off but that's fine we're gonna take our next code which is 13c7 i'm gonna also hit quick save just in case and there's another box this is a like airlock and we don't need to clip this but it's pretty much a free attempt and we did it which is good that means that there is gonna be like a alarm camera here and it's not gonna trigger on us because it's still far away if we don't hit the clip the camera will pretty much be looking straight at us and we don't want the guys behind us on our left you can see the radar to see us because then the ru the the guys in the next room would be alerted which is something we don't want i'm gonna quick save again because we could die here so i'm gonna try the second of these lower clips here and these are easier because i can just keep holding back i was good i'm gonna crouch here so i trigger the ai to look back there so they don't see me and i'm just gonna run past them and they the last guy is seeing me, but the others don't even know that I'm there. And the AI is pretty much like you trigger them at some point and then they're like focused on that point for a little bit until they can uh, detect you again and we can abuse that to make them look certain places. And then we just pretty much uh, walk around them by hiding and that's how we can get around. And that is pretty much the main objective of this mission done. But there's still a boss left, which uh, is going to be a very, very hard fight here, Tanky. Mm. So um, let's prepare for that. So elevators also kind of seem that you will see in this run. It's like elevator simulator. Um, it's not that bad, but the elevator times obviously are times where you're standing still, which you're not doing a lot in this run, which means that uh, yeah, they're very sticking out, especially to us runners, because we just want to like you know go. We're gonna like break this game apart, and just standing in an elevator feels like why can't I not go through the wall, basically? So. It is, it is just like that. He's protected on me, so I'm going to kill him. That means he's not going to kill me. And um, I hope we are not triggered so we can do the next skip. But it should be fine. I hope I can quick save, though. I can quick save. So what we're going to do now is a safe uh, up use. I'm going to hit skip and save. And then going to reload that. And if I did everything right, I'm going to load into the boss fight. I did. Nice. Without the uh, boss AI triggered. One second. Totally no skip. Um, so we pretty much um, load into the scene. Um, we save. 
and then we saved right before like the trigger for the boss pretty much started so when we load we go in but the event doesn't fire off so the boss is just standing there and we can just kill it it's uh, pretty interesting yeah and story wise you need to fight the boss or either have a conversation with him so you can't advance until you either kill him at that moment because well you can't talk with him anymore yeah it will lose us either way a lot of time because to get to, uh, to get to the talk, we would have to go through a cutscene, and that is uh, losing us time. So yeah, that's a nice, nice little bonus there. We only do that like for that trick. There's technically a way to do like practice kits, which is kind of like skill points in this game, but we don't really do it for a run because it's like the the time it takes to duplicate that is not really like returned at any yeah. point in the run. So um, we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna just make some objectives here and go to our boss until we go to the first the big city of this game. And gonna get some upgrades. But first, I promised you elevator simulator. So here we go again. Would this be a great time then? You can absolutely give me some messages if you have some. We do in fact have uh, two messages, or should I say donations. <laughs> we right. got a four uh, $4.20 20, uh, donation, anonymous, uh, saying uh, in, in German, uh, even numbers, we believe. <laughs> and we also got another donation from Aubergine Wolfe uh, for $7.02, uh, saying GG hab keine Name. And that went towards the uh, Pokemon naming incentive. Uh, Flygon is now winning for the run coming right after this. Nice. Well, yeah, thanks for the donations. 420, man, it's still got to wait to Monday, right? Um, but after that, um, yeah, we're going to gonna, gonna uh, see the city now and going to go now, right? Doubling. Um, going to talk to this lady and this is something you can skip under the right yeah. conditions there is a possibility we're playing on a locked frame rate at the moment and in order to do a skip here you would have to manipulate your frame rate and you can kind of use like a tool um, that has uh, the option to uh, like change the frame rate limit during the run I'm not doing that here because a I'm not really a fan of it because it's kind of tool assisted but also because it's uh, a bit more finicky to set up so we're just gonna do with uh, we talk to the lady gun but technically you can pull out your gun there and when you pull out your gun she's scared and you can still do the pull out your gun part without um, the uh, without the frame limited, but you you still were gonna end up talking to the lady because she's just gonna and this mouse is just super slow. Um, uh, because you're still gonna um, end up in her dialogue anyway. It also would only save seven seconds, so for a marathon setting, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you if you're going for a world record, then obviously every second count. But in this case, it's not that important. It's also the only part where we use. Uh, the variable frame rate. There is another part with a so-called funicular clip later on, where apparently with 20 FPS you can do it more consistently, but I haven't tried it out. But there was a conversation recently in the Discord about it. Yeah, um, speaking of Discord, if you're interested in this game or any of the Deus Ex games, join the Discord. We're always there to help you and uh, also figure out some of the um, hunting for this game, for example, oh. because what we are doing is running on the original version of this game. Most of you that would buy this game and play it casually would probably play the director's cut, which is also, if you play casually, the recommended one. But we play on the original version because director's cut has some forced extra um, content. And forced extra content translates to time, so um, and we're not going to do that. There is a specific category that does that, like director's cut uh, extra, but uh, we are just going to do the short version and I'm just gonna safety save here just so I don't have to do it again. So far the clip's going way too good but I did mess other things up. Nine two one two. Yeah. <laughs> I did bring that did bring my my good old sheet. I'm not sure how old that is now. Like <laughs> I, this this years old too. I, I still remember showing it off during one of the marathon runs, <laughs> <laughs> reading everyone the numbers. Alright, I think we didn't get seen, very good. During my practice runs, I messed up a lot here just by getting seen and just getting caught. Yeah, there are a lot of police officers which would run into the corridor. And if they block you, they have machine guns and shotguns, so you get a lot of damage even though we play on the easy difficulty. However, we have hippostims, which are basically our heal pa health packs. 
which you can just use to heal yourself and get more health uh, additionally. But we want to keep them as long as we can for a part later on. Yeah. So wasting them there is fine, but unoptimal. Usually, like you can keep like use one there. It's kind of like yeah. intended to use one on the way out. But uh, if you get like hit a lot in the uh, entryway, you probably need two, and then it's good to have one later. And that's why you don't want to do it. The run isn't dead then, but then you can't like rescue easy again. Probably have to reload later if you have another mess up. So Bonjour it's nice to have. It's not really necessary. But yeah, the hyper systems are on four. You can see my health is at 150 because I used one on the way out just to be safe, so they don't get shot in the back. And speaking of on the way out, as Hanky said, like with the damage and shit, the officer in the front of the door, we shot him in the hat, and he is the guy with the shotgun. And if we would leave, he would be kind of next to us, and that's a bit annoying with shotgun, isn't it? So we did get rid of him, just for that reason, and that's also why the people were kind of not on our side for the time, but yeah, speed is everything, right? Um, other than that, we were at the police station, clipped to the bottom, ran back out, and that's pretty much it. It's an interesting mission if you play this casually, especially if you want to play this uh, stealthy, it's a pretty cool mission. Oh, we're not going to do much of that. What we're going to do now is go to Dero Ballas, which is um, an area where we're going to abuse a lot of the AI mechanics again, and um, pretty much going to make them turn around in a way that they not see us ideally, and that should allow us to get there very well. So, first things first, we're going to so he turns around, we're just going to run over back, they should start turning around very well, so I'm going to say there, I'm going to trigger this guy to turn around, very good, going to go up here, that is a fine, I'm going to save, going to go up here, going to now, I've got seen. Yeah, as you can see, like, every time they get triggered, they look at that specific location for a short period of time, like mostly like five to seven seconds before they go back to their initial state. This is due to the fact that they use a different AI pattern, which goes and checks the state. So the time you he they hear you, they will be locked in that state until it goes back to the original state in that state machine. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot what the AI was called, but it was like one of the new mechanics in this game, which allows you to basically manipulate them quite a lot. Oh, you can even manipulate them even harder with objects if you put them in the path. So there's like the funicular mission, you can literally put a box in front of AI, hide behind it and they will never see you. All right, that was pretty much yeah what we did there. Uh, and we first can well. technically get, get seen there. Um, Yep, that was the correct one. Uh, we can take a get scene here, but I'd rather just make safe so we have enough points in the next chapter. Otherwise, the run would be pretty much dead. That's just why I'm gonna play it safe here. And uh, now we're gonna crouch to pick up these mines. If we're not crouching, then we would be getting exploded and we're gonna use them later. So what you saw when I got up here with the barrel is kind of like a rocket jump but with an item. We throw a grenade below the barrel and that makes it so that the, girl, the barrel gets boosted up from the grenade and if we jump at the right time we can apply that force to us which is then on the other hand boosting us to the sky. So that's what you saw there. We're gonna see another variant of that later, a harder one, and that is the end of this chapter. We have now one of the shortest chapters for us. Not the shortest, it's a short one, uh, but um, the is because of the layout of this map. I'm just gonna shoot that guy so he's not annoying later. And this level is designed in a way that the end is where the beginning is and Malik. so we're gonna abuse that by pretty much going to here picking up our box and you see where this is going and then we're gonna take our box back to spawn um that is because as i said the end is where the entrance is and that means we're now gonna use this box to use the exit the other way around which is just past this wall here. That was a little too early. So, that was a little too late. So the clip timing is always a little bit finicky, but these boxes are usually fine. So I'm gonna go down here to trigger this door so I can open it and 
pick up the box and now we're gonna do uh clip into this door we can't directly clip through doors i don't think that will work it'll clip me out first mm. <coughs> oh mm, maybe no uh, it, it will it will work you're going low yeah so nice. um <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna skill like a fall damage system, and because I skilled it late enough, I, you didn't see an animation. You will see it later. Um, pretty much, doors are something we can't directly clip through ourselves. I need to holster that. I was gonna waste time. Um, but what we can do is clip into one part of them, and then use some techniques. In this case, we wanted to clip through the floor, which is um, possible. In my case, I used like a safe strat, like when you don't get clipped in well enough to like uh, hold myself on and clip through slowly. Usually you clip in and then you slowly go through the floor and then you fall down. Um, we can't call up the elevator because then we wouldn't get uh, out at the bottom. That's why we had to jump past the door at the bottom from the top of the elevator. Um, but yeah, we can't really clip through doors and that is why we had to clip in here and can't like go can't go down and then take the door down it would still obviously be slower because it's an elevator as you can see by the way elevator simulator um but uh yeah um that is why we have to do this uh, weird clip there we don't need this i'm not gonna take that because i don't need to use it anyway there's a little bit of a strat here that, that some people do with the gas grenade i've never done it because it didn't really feel like it does much to me but um, so we're only going to take up an EMP grenade, which is going to be a very handy later. But for now, we are going to return to our boss and purchase Bonches to talk to him. But we have a boss and we are very loyal to the company, so we're going to talk to our boss first. And that means you guessed it, not an elevator. So, yeah. Um, but don't worry, past all this elevator extra, we're gonna go into one of our shortest chapters of this uh, game. It's casually the very opposite, but in this run, oh boy, you will see. There's technically a way to skip this part here too. You can do the safe load stuff here too, but it is uh, tighter and I did don't really like it. For Marathon, probably not worth it. It is like, since we are running with loader movers, that would be fast in this case to do that, since you would skip the dialogue, which saves like around three seconds. But in a RTA setting, it would be slower since you have loading screens, which take longer. Yeah. And the three seconds, like, it is uh, very tight here. You don't have a clear indicator like for the other uh, safe corruption. Like when you press the skip button, you know now is the timing to hit F5. But here it's, it's more fluid, so it's very hard to hit. I wouldn't. I think it's not not frame perfect, but it's near frame perfect. But yeah, uh, that is uh, an option there that we didn't do, and now we're just gonna go to the next Salut. chapter. So it's pretty much like we're gonna go to headquarters, report back, and then go to the next place, right? So now we are in our wonderful longest chapter at all. This is kind of like a Detroitish area, I guess you could say, and I love it. It's a great area. Casually, you have a lot of cool missions here, a lot of places to explore. Generally, this game is very, very explore friendly. There's a lot of places you can go to, a lot of places to sneak in, like gillies. It's a very open world. It's like divided in a few zones that you progress through, but within these zones, you have like an open world kind of settings, I guess is the best way to put it. And you can do a lot of side missions, explorations, and it's uh, very cool. And if you play the director's cut, it also means you can play the whole game in um, non-lethal. It is not possible in this original. Ooh, that was close. And uh, you, you did see me pick up a box, so I guess you... Um, can see where this is going right this is a train station and for this train station we're supposed to get a pass which we're gonna get at the very end of the storyline of this chapter so because we are not into passes but into boxes um one equals the other this is one of the tightest clips at least for me personally this timing is a little it, it feels different than most of the other box clips and i don't know why but it's fine, three times, still good. And now we're in the train station without doing all the story that we needed to do. And just gonna go to our next chapter. So yeah, that was a whole chapter of story that was pretty much... Yeah. Um, 
In our case, uh, a very good designed level. In gameplay too, because normally you don't use boxes to go through walls. Uh, but <laughs> in our case, we love that. It's, it's very good for us. So now we're gonna talk to this guy and we're gonna... It doesn't really matter if you accept or an item mission. I think one is like one dialogue box faster, which is pretty much like lackable into like this thing. We're gonna shoot this door so he doesn't talk to us when we open it. And now we are nearly past this first half. So we're just gonna try to avoid getting detected here. These are too slow to detect us. We're gonna have to see if we can jump over this without getting triggered, but it is not really bad if we did. We did now, so that means the guard is gonna run down here, which means for safety I will shoot him. This leaves me at one round, which is enough, but um, it's always good to have a backup. Uh, but we did need um, some extra shots earlier because we had to kill the guy in the um, first mission, not like the, the first mission pass augmented, because they run into the floor. We had to use two shots there. Normally you have a little bit more of a backup here. And another elevator. It's kind of nice. It's a little bit like, relaxing in between all your um, fast moving and breaking the game things. So. Yeah, we have basically finished the first half of this. We are just gonna go up here. I'm gonna take some items here. That gives me a little bit more extra health, which is gonna be useful for the next clip. It's not necessary, but it means that if something goes wrong, like uh, you, you, you can make it so you don't get too much damage that you will get killed, but you can take the pills and that will guarantee that you're not getting killed. And that's why we take the pills. Means I have 129 health now. And we take this fire extinguisher with us. You saw me use one before. This is gonna be a little bit different. But first, we're gonna arrive here and send the elevator back down without us in it. Because um, we're gonna have to clip over it. Which is very much done by getting up here, I'm gonna say. Picking this up and swiping the camera to the side we wanted to very quickly, which overwhelms the, I mean, it's technically in. I c can I shove it? No, nope. that actually even bricked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we have to get it into the wall because uh, we need it. Oh, I was so quick. Um, this is a little, yeah, okay, that's fine by me. Um, this is uh, pretty much when we pick it up and swipe fast enough, it clips in. This is very up. good. All right, and now I'm gonna save again just for safety and use what I just skilled in the elevator, which is called the Typhoon. It's kind of like a 360 degree mine around here. And it has a very interesting physical uh, thing within the engine, which is gonna put us up, up and backwards a tiny bit, which means when we're standing in the corner, we are gonna get out of bounds. Now I'm gonna just pick this up. Oh, I said I dropped it. Um, Gonna pick this up, that's why we had to clip it out of bounds. We can't clip it into bounds by picking it up. It would just stick there and we would drag ourselves in. No, that's a bad grab, that's fine. It's in a little bit of a bad spot, but it's fine. All right, now we are gonna... No, this is fine. So, let me save. We're gonna put a mine here and now we're gonna do something similar to the barrel jump, just... <laughs> A little bit time. Oh, nice. First try. <laughs> Pretty good. First try and correct side. So, um, we do the same thing as the barrel with the mine here and on a just very much slimmer surface. And you have the fire extinguisher which had the hose, which means the hitbox is a little weird too. So, it likes tipping over, then it tips over with the mine, which wouldn't work. And the timing itself is also not that straightforward. But for the most part, um, it works with like with a little bit of an audio cue uh, pretty well, and yeah, it's otherwise the same with the physics applying to our jump and getting enough height, and then we clip through the floor. Like a lot of games have where you can go through the roof and there's no collision check from the roof. This is the same here from the floor, so we can clip into the room. And there's two sides we can end up with, depending on which we're gonna input another code to get into the office or not. Uh, but we got to the right side, which means we've gone straight to the elevator. Whatever, you know the drill by now, but um, sadly, there's gonna be uh, more of this. So if you like elevators, um, we do have a nice mod for this, um, <laughs> which, did we? No, I think that mod was for loading zones, not elevators. Exactly. But someone should make a mod for elevators. Um, like, 
I don't know, find when the elevator animation is uh, active or not. Uh, because there's a lot of them, so you're going to get a lot of use out of it. And now I'm going to shoot here to trigger these to run out. And then I'm going to need them so they stop shooting at me and we can run past them. And that's why we needed one shot left. Other than that, we're gonna get new stuff when we need it again. And we're gonna use our EMP grenade we picked up earlier. And because this fight is, if you don't have EMPs or you don't think about using them, is a little bit not that easy. But we have EMPs and these nice roboters, which are, um, yeah. You can see two times hunk of junk, which means we hit both of them. Now we're gonna press this button and we're gonna go down. I'm not picking up another EMP that would be in there as like a backup, because I'm using a strat later that uses an EMP mine instead of the grenade. But um, yeah, pretty much we have killed them with an EMP that disabled them. And now we're just gonna talk to Farita to get to our next objective we're gonna pick up one more typhoon here we're gonna have uh, one later but this is kind of like a backup for a second try and another nate which we're definitely gonna need in this very chapter even so let's see this is a uh, this jump here is not possible outside of the correct frame rate. You can't not jump on this box in a normal like unless you have the right PC conditions. You can't really jump on this box, but for some reason the physics under the right frame rates make it so you can jump on the box, which allows us to get out of bounds. And now we skipped half the level, and this is the funicular that Hanky was talking about earlier which uh, can be frame rate dependent, which is ex also why I'm running on exactly 78 FPS. 80 wouldn't work. And 78 is very easy for this. If you have a higher frame rate, like 80, you would... The box, the first part of this is gonna be really bouncy. Now I'm inside the first side of the door, as we said, we can't clip through doors directly, so I sandwich in between, and then through some mechanics you can get through the other door, um, which took a little bit here, sometimes you can get it very quick, but uh, we still did it in the end, so that's what matters, and now we are in the longest elevator of the game. It's not exactly an elevator, I guess it's a, like a, it's a funicular, it's called a funicular. I would still say it's more than an elevator, but I don't know. It is uh, definitely a, a big thing, moving up and down, and it's very slow. It's also very interesting that um, we are riding down this thing and we're going to have a preacher tell us that it's nearly there. We're nearly there too. Other <laughs> so. than that, this is like a downtown. We're going to drive to, I'm not sure what the final level is, but in the 20s. So, yeah, we're in here for a little bit. So, dear host, do we have some messages? Absolutely, I can always talk about how your donations to save the children help ch hey, help save children uh, all around the world. So, I previously mentioned uh, Save the Children operates in 120 countries around the world, but what I did not mention is how even just, uh, you know, we mentioned about how smaller donations can help. Let's talk about the big picture here. We've raised $122.22 so far. And $100 from Save the Children, that can build an entire shelter and supply it with essential supplies to and help save a fam family in crisis <coughs> and help them to survive. So think about that. The money we've raised already on day one, that can build an entire shelter. So keep raising money. Keep raising lots of money. Keep on donating and keep on selecting those incentives. We still have a, we still have one uh, this night. We have the risk of rain two. Uh, choose the character incentive, and the getter is now actually winning with eighteen dollars and thirty two cents. But hey, if you want Ganondorf to win, or Goku, or Samus, it's just one donation away. Give me Goku. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, yeah, obviously, um, very nice to uh, provide shelter, and because not everyone has that everywhere around the world. I did not have my grenade selected, that's why I didn't throw it. Um, so I'm just gonna reload here and pick up my grenade this time, which means I can throw it. So there's a way to throw this at the ceiling, which will make it a little bit faster, because now I have to wait till one is exploded, otherwise I would kick the other grenade away. 
but um, I'm doing the safer way here and just throwing it at the floor. And that is pretty much the next boss. You saw it was killing the first boss with three mines. This was three grenades. It's pretty much um, three um, explosives kill uh, EMP mine. Yes, um, three explosives kill a boss and easy and this. And I ran into this hallway a little uh, bit uh, before turning around, which is something that may look weird, but it is because we triggered the cancelling for this helicopter to land, and as you can see, I couldn't click it directly while I was here, which is uh, why we triggered it, so she already lands while we're still picking up and looting, which is kind of like a free loot because of this long cutscene. And yeah, um, that was... Uh, the next boss and now we are returning to our home city which is not in the same condition as before because there's a little of a riot going on so we would have two elevator rides ahead of us which are you know we've seen enough of them so i'm just gonna do ooh, that was nearly a soft lock so you can get wedged in here which would be soft lock you can't quick save so that means you get a hard load it's not that bad because like you, you just spawn but it's still obviously in a, in, in a time run. You see, actually, this is the soft lock, so I gotta have to um, lay this auto save. I uh, have to load this uh, because you get stuck in uh, in between the lampposts there, and you can't quick save due to a uh, bit being straight after the loading into the level, and I don't know, because of the animation it's playing or something? Correct, because the helipad is playing, so you can't save in that moment, so you need to wait. Yeah, and um, that's that's how it's supposed to look like and now we're going uh, to drop down here which is something we could speed up a little bit if we took the fire extinguisher out of bounds like we did it for the um, second boost thing and then we can stand on top of it and fall down with it which wouldn't activate our fall down thing so we fall with the object which is a little faster than our fall down animation um, but it's, ju it's, it's just very little safe so it's not really worth it for the marathon and yeah, we skipped two elevators and are now gonna go um, skip pretty much all missions in this again too. So we're gonna pick this box up and you know by now where we is this going, right? So our box has to go a little bit on a walk with us to where we need it to be, which is somewhere over here. We're nearly there, don't worry. We're just half past half the town and now we're gonna go here throw that box to that corner and we can holster this because we don't need it and now we're here and this is gonna be one more of these half clips which means I can't clip too far into the wall otherwise I would fall down and now we're gonna go around this barrier there's a little bit of a collision there in the building it allows us to walk onto and go past the barrier because the barrier itself is not clippable it's this thick um, but the corner is, and now we have entered this building, which we're not supposed to enter through this door at all. So the game thinks we have done what the mission tells us, which would have ended us with the helicopter. So it plays that scene and puts us there anyway. Um, it means we have, yeah, pretty much skipped all of the stories in this level again, and are gonna do. I don't know if this elevator right. Technically, I could drive this up at any story, but obviously taking the highest story means it has the shortest way to travel. And that's always why I'm going up the staircase, even though the mission objective was one story down, because it would be where I've exited. But it's lower, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to talk to our boss again here, this time without seeing much of it. And now we're going to switch our difficulty to give me a challenge, which is the medium difficulty which is something needed for the next part of this game where we're going back to the shortest chapter we had with the train station skip uh, this time we're gonna see a little bit more of the city though and yeah that is the next base done going back and now we are getting ambushed kinda we're not going to where we intended to and that leaves us here which is where we're gonna skill cloak not that 
cloaking. Which, do we have three? We have oh, three. Very good. So now we're gonna walk here. So we like try to keep them this direction and cloak past them. And I'm gonna try this trick here. Did I do? Yes. Um, so we are jumping from there onto this railing here. And by doing that, we are skipping uh, a cutscene trigger. And that means we can just watch this happen here. And um, Pritchard is now talking to us. He would talk to us normally after the cutscene, which is longer. So we are already saving some time that way. And we save, uh, we changed our difficulty because we want Malik to die. It is, we won't see that from the dialogue, but she's dying. And we need that. This was perfect. She talked directly after Pritchard because until she's dead, there's not going to be dialogue, which means we have to wait and that's why we change the difficulty at uh, the normal difficulty it's uh, very 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 likely gonna have a pause um but at give me a challenge it's usually uh, is instant like this and that's perfect that is the uh, biggest time save there so we are now in the city again and you can see something is a little bit amiss here right um, this is some glitches and we could go to a clinic to fix ourselves, but that would waste time and it's not even that necessary. Um, but you will find out later. For now, we are just gonna go through the city, which is like a little bit like Tokyo, I guess. It's a very, very Asian scene. And we're gonna close past this guy, which wants to extort us from many. And run here. The guard on the right are alarmed to us, but they are like, I don't know. They're pretty uh, distracted and not really noticing us. So we can just skip that and get past all of this urban area to go into the sewers. We're certainly not see too much more of this beautiful city, which is like, see, it's, it's, it's very modern. But we're gonna go dive deep into its dark secrets through the sewer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now I can jump down without activating my um, falling thing. And I should... Yeah, oh, I got alarm. That should be fine still. I'm just gonna go a little bit on the side here so they trigger on me, but that's no problem. And we're just gonna cloak parse that for the most part. Which is also true for this next section here, where we're gonna just cloak past. And uh, one second too late. Uh, if you go like into your uh, reserve of the first battery, you're not gonna regen the, the second one. If you time it well and just stop it before it runs out, then you can like regenerate your second didn't quite do that there but we do have enough uh, like energy uh, recovery things to still not bother it's just nice to have and um, you can see there's another glitch uh, that is uh, done now and that's the only time so we're gonna see it but um, yeah there's a little bit of stuff going on right now which is something we're gonna see very soon for now we're gonna leave pseudo which is uh, good because it stinks and um, I don't know you can probably disable it with an augmentation for your nose or something but um, it's still not a nice place to live so we are just going here I'm gonna do my route here around this fence which is a little bit safer than going over the um, container there which is where you have to uh, hope that you're not getting killed by the electricity that's up there. Not too bad, but I just like playing it safe. So this is uh, 3, 2, 9, 5, isn't it? No, it's no 4, 5, 2, 3. Or 8, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, numpad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take another energy kit here. We're gonna go up till here. Now the turret will trigger on us, but now it's um, 3, 2, 9, 5. I always confuse these two codes. Uh, also, I can uncloak. And now we have a bomb. This is actually on a timer, like the dialogue from picking up the bomb to here, or from some point, um, is where we have a little bit of flexibility until we can activate the bomb. But it is uh, pretty much like a, a waiting point there. So we didn't lose much time. 
And now we're going to do another clip here. So this clip is saving only little, but it, it may still save, it's safe, it's safe. Yeah, also the part we just skipped, or with where we are right now, that in between that part, before we get to Singapore, that would be the Missing Link DLC, which you would play in the Director's Cut version. Yes, and that is a first, and that is why we're not uh, very keen on using the Director's Cut version for the full game run. Obviously, there's still some people that do, but for the quickest way to play this game, we are gonna skip that by running the original version. So here's another of these half clips, which means not going too far into the wall. And to do that, or, or we are doing this, it's good to go around this. And you saw there is something clipping in there, which means we hit an activation trigger, which is important, because now we're going to land down here. And you can't see the environment, but it was necessary to hit the trigger to get an um, elevator door to be activatable. And now I'm just going to navigate here through some visual signs. And I think that should be it. Now I can run here. So what we basically do, and which is one of the reasons we have all these elevator scenes, is that the developers made it into chunks. So the moment you go through a certain door or a certain elevator, the next area will be loaded. So what we do here is, while we're out of bounds, we trigger the collision or the collider for the next area, but we deload it by going precisely next to it. So the next area is loaded and we can have all the collision there, but you don't see anything rendered. And that way you can skip the boss fight and go to the door to load the next section. Finally, the boss that we are skipping there is the boss I've never... Like, when I played this game casually, this is where I start. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen the boss, though. Like, I didn't get to it and just quit it on it. But this is where I start my casual play, so it's pretty funny that I'm not even seeing the boss now in the speed. Um, which is kind of case for the end boss as well. We're seeing it, but it's not quite intentional. You will find out very soon. But for now, we have finished this section. After a little bit of dialogue, we're going to activate this button and go into our last chapter and area of the game, which is a completely new area, which is Pangea. And there we're going to see what all these glitches are about, just a little bit. I don't want to go into detail, but you can already see some of the people here are behaving weirdly. And that's because their implants are doing some weird shit to them. And um, yes, our job is now to fix that. And that is why we're going to where we think the reason for that is. And that is going to be the last chapter of this speedrun. And starting it off, we're going to see... Some walking Jensen, and another of these doors, thingies, in combination with the new typhoon. But for now, a little bit of walking. We can see Pantia. Pantia, I don't know. It doesn't really. If we have a walking section here, I guess this is your one and only chance to uh, switch out Pokemon Scarlet slash Violent naming bit war. That is, uh, there's not gonna be much left of this game. So definitely, if you want to get your donations in there, hit them up now. You only have about two, three minutes. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure from here. Plus the intermission. <laughs> Plus the intermission. <laughs> Plus the, yeah, sure. Um, this, this is too sensitive. Um, or my mouse is too insensitive. So, we have another door here, which means we have to get... Uh, that is not what I need to... It clipped me into crouch, which is not what I want. So, I'm gonna go diagonally here and use the Typhoon. I'm in the door halfway now, but I can't get through this door the way um, we did, for example, through the funicular. But what we can do is that it works, so we're gonna reload. Um, but what we can do is get in the right position, then use the... Um, Typhoon to clip us the, the last mile. This is looks better. So let's try it again. It can sometimes be a little finicky, and I think every runner does it a little bit different. Okay, that yeah, still didn't work. Because um, for some runners, diagonal works better, for some straight works better. It's a, li it's a little bit finicky. It's Pas descendre sans les débloquer manuellement. Depuis le haut de la tour, compris. 
Okay. I mean, it should work. Yeah, that looks good. Normally, I'm not clipping straight into it, but rather doing like a swipe clip. That seems more consistent, but it did work. That's good. So what we do is getting clipped in there. And the very important part is we're going to hit a loading trigger that is above the door. And if we wouldn't go there, this wouldn't be loaded. So we can technically clip with the box through the side of the door, but then we can't do anything here. That's why we have to use the door to load the trigger to progress here. You can also sometimes half, uh, like you can sometimes clip through the door without hitting a trigger, which is uh, meaning you have to reload also because the area wouldn't be loaded as well. Um, but yes, that is why we go through the door, not through the wall, and oops, and yeah, it is one of the, it's the last door and one of the last clips we'll see. We'll first see a bridge here, which is called Star Wars Bridge, because, do you know Yeah, so the reason this is called Star Wars Bridge is when Dr. Teachups was working on the auto splitter for this, he, the developers called it in the memory slot, so this is the only way we figured out that they called it Star Wars Bridge. So. Hit a little bit here, but I see. Ah, yeah, so the, the zombies, as we like to call them, have now the slowdown effect on you when they hit you. So every time they hit you, they basically slow you down as well, and that's pretty bad. So This is also uh, where having yeah. some hyper stims left is very good. Because that is, that is I, like, for in the run, this is probably where the most uh, where you can save this. But um, yeah, we have the last half clip here. So hopefully, we can and don't mess this up. Otherwise, we have to do the Star Wars bridge again because you can't save because you are currently uh, attacked by some very nasty people on the bridge. Uh, that's why I'm also rather like taking it um, slow here and uh, rather going too short than too long. You can also go into the corridor in the next area and then save, because then the, they are not alarmed. Oh, that worked anyway. Yeah. So now I'm going to show my EMP here and shoot it. And now we are going to wait till in the middle you can see the failure appear. Exactly. Like that. A little late, but it's fine. Because we want to skip a lot of this fall. Um, because this animation takes ages and because we have to get, from this point at least, to have to get over, otherwise we would fall into the void. And that's why we're timing it with uh, the EMP to disable our thingy. Where's the door? There's the door. And now we are at the end boss. And this end boss is uh, protected by glass and I do I possess a laser weapon, which goes through glass. So I'm um, uh, doing, it. Uh, no, that was, uh, I'm, I'm just, using the wrong buttons to get out of the scope. It doesn't matter, it's out of the scope now anyway. And that was the final boss. And this means we are going to end the run uh, in a very few seconds by pressing this button. There's a few here, depending on what ending you unlocked. We obviously didn't go for other endings, but there's three here and there's kind of another one over here, which we are not gonna use here because it doesn't, wasn't too bad. Like usually if the, if the run is bad and you just, you just blow up everything by pressing that button uh, which we didn't do here and that is time a few seconds late just like to start and that is human revolution <laughs> ggs and yeah as we said earlier if you're interested in this game or any of the dsx games join our discord you can find it through uh, speedrun.com or just by googling and you will find me heinke and other lovely people there uh, ready to help you out and ask or answer your questions and even if you don't want to speedrun check this game out casually this aged very well the first dsx is also pretty nice if you, you have to be into that older style of games but it, if you are it's a very nice game as well but yeah your revolution generally a pretty good recommendation it aged very well very nice game and it's not like it's pretty cheap these days so check it out if you haven't yet and that is it from me um at least from in front of the camera and I will give it back to the intermission team with the preparation for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. See you.